has finally come. They nerfed the MP5, the beloved MP5. But anyways, in today's video, we're going to be talking about several different things. We're going to take a look at exactly what was nerfed, and then we're going to take a look at the no stock nerf that was also applied in game. So in today's video, we're specifically going to look at the MP5. Before we get into today's video, it really meant a lot to me if we can hit our like goal today of 500 likes. It will show me that this is the kind of content you want to continue to see. And make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. If you constantly watch my videos, but you just haven't hit that subscribe button, why not, man? What are you waiting for, dude? Subscribe today, join Turbo Nation, make it official, and make sure to turn on notifications on. All right, so we're going to outline the class setup really quick of what I do recommend after this nerf. So for starters, we're going to start off with a monolithic integral suppressor. This is going to give us a two for one, sound suppression and bullet velocity. Now, it doesn't state that it increases your damage range. However, it actually does, which is why I really recommend this attachment over the monolithic suppressor. So that's why you got to run this one. You get a two for one. Like I said, you can stay stealthy and at the same time, increase that damage range. So for the next attachment, we're going to be running with the Merc foregrip. Now, the reason why I chose the Merc foregrip is because it has decent recoil control. And the main thing is for that hip fire accuracy, because when you're using an SMG like the MP5, you are most likely going to be clearing out rooms, rushing towards enemies up close and personal. So in certain situations, you might need to hip fire. And this actually gives you a pretty good hip fire spread in those type of situations. All right, now for the perk, we're going to be running with sleight of hand. So this is something that I've been experimenting with. And I find that, you know, having sleight of hand on a 30 round magazine is definitely going to be key in certain situations. When you're rushing around the map and you're going against multiple enemies at a time, it would actually be a good idea to stay locked and loaded ready for the next gunfight. So that's why I do recommend sleight of hand. Now for the rear grip, we're going to be running with stippled grip tape. We do need that aim down sight speed pro to mitigate the other cons that some of these attachments do have. So having that aim down sight speed is going to be a plus as well as that sprint of fire speed. Again, we are rushing. We are going to be playing pretty aggressive. So that's why you need that sprint to fire speed pro. Now for the big main event here, the 10 millimeter auto 30 round magazine, the best damage as well as the most range. So in a little bit, we're going to go ahead and take a look at exactly what was nerfed and see if this is still a viable setup. Now, one thing that you may have noticed is that I'm not running any stock at all. Now, this is completely optional. If you do feel comfortable with that no stock nerf, then by all means, just use the collapsible stock. If you can control that recoil, then go ahead and do it. So now let's go ahead and take a look into details of exactly what changed and if this setup is actually still viable. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of a wall test here to see if the no stock option on the MP5 really is hindered after the nerf. And this right here is the base recoil with no attachments at all. I didn't try to control the recoil. And I also do have the 30 round magazine. So let's go ahead and try to do a wall test here. Now, as you can see here, there is a lot more vertical recoil and a lot more side to side bounce at the top of your shot. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put on my recommended attachments for this class setup and see if that recoil is still the same. Put on the monolithic integral suppressor and my underbarrel is going to be the Merc foregrip. And we're going to go ahead and see if there's any changes at all. All right, so as you can see, there is less vertical recoil with the attachments that I do recommend. And, you know, there is a little bit of some separation here in the bullet spread. So obviously that's not good. It's a little bit more consistent. As you can see, it's not jumbled up at the top as it is over here. So over here, it goes straight, straight, straight. And then it just clusters right there while over here, it doesn't really stay that consistent. All right, so now I want to test this by removing the no stock and let's see what happens. All right, so that is a pretty big difference right there and why you should probably consider removing that collapsible stock option on the MP5. By removing the collapsible stock, we do get a much cleaner recoil pattern here. Everything is a lot more consistent. Bullet spread is so much tighter compared to the rest. So you tell me, you know, are you going to be running that no stock option? All right, so let's just get into exactly what happened here with this nerf. So as you can see here, we do have the MP5 pre nerf stats over here. And over here we have the MP5 post nerf. So this is just the standard MP5. There's no 10 millimeter auto 30 round magazines here. I will show that in a little bit. But as you can see here, the pre nerf, 
under 12 meters you get this damage profile here and now post nerf now it's under 10 meters you get this same exact damage profile so long story short the only thing that changed was that slight reduction in the damage range as indicated in the patch notes it was only reduced one meter in this damage range category and you know what that's not a big deal now here is where the nerf actually comes into play over here we got 19 to 29 meters and right here it was reduced to 18 to 26 meters and keep in mind this is without attachments that do increase that damage range so now let's go ahead and take a look at the auto 30 round magazine all right now if you choose to use the auto 30 round magazines as you can see here the damage range actually does get increased just slightly from that close range now as you can see here that mid range to borderline long range is where you're going to start seeing the advantage by using these 30 round magazines so let's just be real here it's an smg you don't use smgs at super long range you want to play as close as you possibly can to maximize the time to kill as well as taking advantage of those shots to kill so in most situations in multiplayer you're most likely going to fall within this range so let's take this one step further and let's add on the monolithic integral suppressor which is an attachment that i highly Highly recommend all right so here we have on the right we have the mp5 30 round magazine plus the monolithic integral suppressor and on the left we have just the auto 30 round magazine 10 millimeter your damage range actually does get increased quite a bit the part where it really shines the most is going to be again that mid range to semi long range you do want to take advantage of that mid range and this is how you essentially get it back to the mp5 before it was nerfed i feel like a lot of people are overreacting with this mp5 nerf be mind of those damage ranges and the ranges that you need to be taking advantage of so play up close and personal as much as possible play smart try to close that gap between yourself and the enemy all right so for the next portion of the video i will be breaking down a gameplay using this exact same class setup so yeah guys i will see you guys in the next portion of the video all right so here we are we're playing on hard hat this is another one of those throwback maps that i do thoroughly enjoy playing on simply because you know i've played through modern warfare 2 all the way and beyond since then and this was a throwback map from modern warfare 3 and i really enjoyed playing this back in the day i had to mute these people because you know i want to be able to concentrate at the task at hand with no distractions at all so anyways first thing to notice right off the bat is look at where my teammates are i immediately break away from my team and i'm essentially sticking to the outskirts of the map as you can see here i'm going to approach this ledge and i'm going to get the head glitch and that allowed me to get the advantage in that particular situation so now i'm going to continue going up oh <laughs> This dude really got world starred right there, man. He almost got me, but that's why I'm running a pretty decently high sensitivity. It's a 7 sensitivity. I know it's not super high, but it's decently high. Uh, and that's what is perfect for me. So anyways, now I'm going to be able to cut through the middle here. Now that I see where my teammates are, I check my right. No one's there. I peek through this door because I don't want them to hear me coming in there. Now, unfortunately, when I look to my right very quickly, there was nobody there. And that's something that you also want to get into the habit of. I know I died here in this situation, but when you're turning to look in different areas, it really helps to, you know, take a quick look into that direction and then be about your business because, you know, you don't want to get caught blindsided by an enemy who's looking already at you. That's why I took a quick little look over here. As you can see, as I approach this area, whoop, right there, and then I go back. I feel like, you know, sound is just everything in this game and it gives players a really big chance to just find you and kill you. So here I am. I just was able to take out that guy as I was aiming down sights. That's why it's very important every time I say aim down sights whenever you do go into a new area. Now, the reason why I went down there is because that was where the guy last was. He was literally just camping in the tube. So I went back just to clean it up. And one little small minor detail, let's let this play play out. Yep, I got double team there. There was not much I can do in that situation. I tried to get as much cover as I possibly could. But let's back it up here just a little bit. So as I approach this corner, notice how I jump around the corner just like this. So doing this breaks the enemy's camera. You know, this is pretty much like a thing that's always been in Call of Duty. This is what the pros do. And as you can see, this guy had absolutely no chance in this gunfight because I was already in midair, making my movement a little bit less predictable. And at the same time, I was already aimed in. So as you can see, I was able to take out this guy. He had his gun down. And I tried to challenge him and I used this little cinder block, whatever you call that, to my advantage. But unfortunately, I just got double team in that situation. All right, so now I'm going to investigate the middle of the map area. I'm going to help out my teammate. I figured, you know what? I'm not on a streak anymore. Let me go help my teammate out. And doing that was a huge mistake. I shouldn't have done that, you know, looking on the gameplay. Now, 
I probably should have been a little bit more patient, but you know, when I'm not on a streak, that's when I tend to play a little bit more uh, aggressive. So I basically just followed this guy's footprints all the way up those stairs. I just made the connection. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that guy. I'm going to try to get a little uh, wall bang here. I was actually questioning myself, how did this man get behind our team? Because I had teammates behind me. That's why I wasn't worried uh, about what was going on behind me. So now I'm going to investigate the same area once again. And I'm going to pre-aim. I see one guy right there to the left. I'm going to try to weasel my way in here. I'm going to pump fake a little bit. I'm going to take the shortcut. And that's how I was able to get that kill. So let me just replay that one more time. As you can see, he's right behind that box. Best believe he does see me as well. He actually has really good position right now. So instead of just going head on and challenging the guy, I'm just going to cut through here. As you can see, I use, I use those objects to my advantage to give me cover as I advance forward. And that's what you have to do. And now I'm able to blindside this guy and catch him off guard and get the easy kill. So those are small little things that you have to consider when you're playing this game is use the objects to your advantage. As you can see here again, I'm uh, using that head glitch. My teammate just died. I just saw him on the minimap. And again, I just jumped around the corner like I did earlier. Watch, watch that minimap. Teammate disappears. That's my cue. I know that there's an enemy there. Now, the reason why I jump around this corner is to make myself a harder target to hit. Obviously, that guy just did not expect me to come around that corner at all. And I'm pretty sure from his point of view, it looks like I just magically appeared there. So my teammate was shooting at somebody. That's why I went back to go investigate. Now, so the reason why I turn around this way is because I noticed all my teammates are behind me. That's how you predict where the spawns are flipping by looking at the minimap. So that's why I'm going to go this way. It's not like I knew that there was going to be somebody here. Like I said, it's just basic fundamentals. And I'm going to pre-aim around this corner. And that's another fundamental as well. You just got to pre-aim around corners and that gives you a massive advantage. So I know 100% for a fact that they're going to still be spawning in from this area because look at that. Look at that UAV. It also confirms that as well. But even without the UAV, that's how I would know that there was a definite indication that there's going to be enemies in this area. Now, I'm looking at my ammo. I've only got 21 in reserve. That's why I went ahead and rotated and retreated. I most definitely could have stayed in that position and just held them off. But, you know, I, I noticed I didn't have a lot of ammo. That's why I had to retreat. And those are little signs that you have to look for as well when you're playing. So mounting has actually been one of those things that I started to do a lot more. I don't do it to be uh, an annoying type of player. I do it to protect myself in different gunfights and just, just to get like a bit of an advantage and peek and see. I want to show you guys what I did here. So I'm slowly creeping around this corner. I hear their footsteps. I see two enemies. And I was able to take out one. I quickly stim shot just to be able to regen my health as fast as possible. And look at where I'm positioned right now. It's all about positioning in Call of Duty. I, I'm on top of these boxes right now. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait for this guy. I know for a fact there's an enemy there. And I know he knows that I'm here. But I have the advantage because I've got that height advantage. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to see if he pops up. I'm not going to wait there forever because I don't want to get flanked. I see that he takes my teammate out the minute that I look away. He takes another one of my teammates out. So again, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to listen to footsteps, take him out, and I'm going to retreat immediately. Because, you know, at that point, best believe the enemy team, they're going to be bum rushing that room because they see that their teammates are dying and they want to help out. Again, here I am. I'm sticking to the outskirts of the map. I got that really nice head glitch, and that earns me my white phosphorus. So as you can see, I'm just sticking to the outskirts of the map. Again, I'm mounting on this wall just to make sure that there's no enemies there. And should there be an enemy, I do have the advantage. Again, the advantage of aiming down sights when you're turning around corners. You don't want to turn around corners dramatically and just aim down sights while you're walking. You know, you kind of want to do it only in certain situations. And I heard that guy reloading his weapon. That's why I was aiming down sights while I was walking to make my footsteps a lot quieter. If you guys didn't know that, that actually helps you out. I look at my kill streak here. And I'm literally one kill away. I'm one kill off my advance, so you're going to see me play a little bit more reserved here, a little bit more passive. So wherever my teammates are going, that's where I'm going to go because I want to go ahead and try to steal a kill from them. So as you can see, I also did put down my munitions box. I'm always conscious of how much ammo I have because with the MP5 30 round magazine, it's just simply not enough to take out multiple enemies at a time. Here I am again. I'm mounting on that. But I decided to go ahead and throw my C4. Unfortunately, he was wearing the EOD perk. Or he had the EOD perk equipped. I don't know why I said wearing. And that grants me my advanced UAV. So after I kill this guy, I'm going to go ahead and call in my white phosphorus. 
Because calling in the White Phosphorus while you have your advanced UAV up gives you a massive advantage. It creates panic in the enemy because they don't know where to go, they don't know how to see. And I put it accordingly on the map where it should go. That movement saved my life in that situation, that drop shot mechanic. And now I'm on a Ruthless. I'm looking to stay alive as long as I possibly can. And... Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> You know, after this gameplay, to be honest with you, you know, I figured, you know, the white phosphorus is a really nice advantage and a good little combination with the advanced UAV, but it's just simply not worth it if I, it means dying off of my streak. So as you can see, it does make the enemies one shot, which is nice. And I'm just going to be playing basically to the mini map, you know, where the enemies are showing up. And unfortunately, I didn't see this guy. He literally spawned right behind me, as you can see. And that's just not fair, man. I, I don't. I really don't understand the spawns in this game sometimes. So, you know, you kind of have to just roll with the punches and just go along with it. You know, it is what it is. So I hear footsteps. Somebody's coming up here. I jump around this corner and I was able to take out the second enemy. So again, I just want to replay that just to show you guys the effectiveness of, you know, jumping and aiming down sights around corner. Here we go. Boom, little bunny hop. While I'm aiming down sights and I was able to take out that guy. So I'm looking at the score right now. We got at least one more kill left in the game. That's why I'm going to ramp up the intensity a little bit and just play a little bit more aggressive. And there you go. I get myself the win. And as you can see, I also did see his footprints. And that's how I knew where that enemy was, as you can see right there. And it led me to the easy kill. Hopefully, you guys did learn something on this map. Again, you always want to try to take it one step at a time. And, you know, the more you play, the more second nature it will be as far as learning how to rotate around the map accordingly. You know, knowing where the spawns are flipping, looking at that mini map every now and then to be able to give you that advantage. So we finish off this match with 28 kills and 7 deaths. Again, Hard Hat was one of my personal favorites back in the day. And that's why it was really easy for me to navigate around this map and just play accordingly to what the enemy was giving me. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to drop a like on it if you did. And make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. Join Turbo Nation. What are you waiting for, man? Subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day, man. Peace.